Hi, and welcome back to My Mom's Basement. This is the podcast where I tell you short stories that are being recorded in my mom's basement. I'm your host, David Chamberlain, and if you haven't already, I encourage you to go back and listen to last week's episode. Uh, It's a good one. Um, But without further ado, why don't we just jump right in? Uh, This week's story is entitled The Legend of Bill Allred, written by me, David Chamberlain. Thank you. This story is about a man named Bill Allred. Bill Allred's full name was actually William Cyrus Allred, but everyone knew him as Bill, and so I will refer to him as such. His wife, Cassie Allred, would call him Bilbo. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien was Bill's favorite story, and Cassie affectionately referred to Bill as the protagonist of that book, the protagonist, of course, being named Bilbo Baggins. Bill's wife, who called him Bilbo, was the first to hear of Bill's death, Bill died from a bullet that ruptured his aorta at approximately 11.43 a.m. on April 23, 2023. The bullet had come from a semi-automatic rifle, which had already spent 13 rounds on various other victims, killing nine of them. Bill would be the tenth fatality. The rifle from which the bullet traveled at close to supersonic speeds was held by a 15-year-old sophomore high school student. He was an attendee of Mountaindale High School and wrote for the school newspaper. Most of his fellow students described him as funny, quick to help out a friend, and super down-to-earth. The president of the student body at Mountaindale even said, I thought he was going to be a big deal. He was such a witty guy. He knew just how to make everyone laugh. Well, as it turns out, the 15-year-old was not down-to-earth. He had been planning to massacre his fellow students for close to six months. Bill Allred was never mentioned in those plans, however. Bill Allred was not an established figure at Mountaindale High School. Bill Allred was a substitute teacher who happened to be filling in for Mrs. Donaldson's English class that Friday, the 23rd, as Mrs. Donaldson wasn't feeling herself that day. Interestingly enough, Mrs. Donaldson happened to be a rather avid Tolkien fan, and her walls were decorated in various Lord of the Rings posters and memorabilia. Bilbo Allred couldn't help but feel safe in that environment. Well, Mrs. Donaldson's second period English class was home to Danny Escalante, the girl whose repeated rejections drove the 15-year-old shooter to put two 7.62 caliber rounds in her chest and face. Now we see how Bill Allred got in the middle of the massacre. But this isn't the story of Bill Allred's death. This is the story of the week prior to his passing, the week that made Bill Allred one of the most famous men in the United States, if not the world. In April of 2023, there was a string of public school shootings resulting in the deaths of 126 students, faculty, and emergency response workers. The shootings took the lives of students ranging from 9 to 18 years of age, and Bill Allred, the substitute teacher whose wife called him Bilbo, was involved in all five of the public school shootings, the fifth shooting being the one which took his life. You see, Bill Allred substituted in Salt Lake County, the county in which all five of these shootings took place. The first shooting took place in Oakmont Middle School. A young man took his dad's three fifty seven revolver to school and shot two girls in his geometry class before turning the gun on himself. Bill Allred was subbing that geometry class. The usual teacher, Mrs. Wilcox, had just gotten back from visiting her daughter in the Philippines and so was not up to teaching that day. The students in that class say they remember two things distinctly about that event. The warmness of the blood which sprayed the back of their necks, and Mr. Allred hurtling three rows of chairs to tackle the young murderer. Of course, the young man took his own life before Allred could reach him. Do you think things would have gone different if Mr. Allred had not been there? Asked a reporter to one of the students in the geometry class. I don't know. Probably. I guess. Said the student. Bill told his wife that night that he would keep subbing. These things happen, and it would be the best thing for his mental health if he kept his daily routine. That night, however, Bill didn't sleep. The next day, Bill returned to work as if nothing had happened and subbed for an art class at Oak Ridge High School, not to be confused with Oakmont Middle School. Mr. Bukowski, the painting and drawing teacher, was finalizing a divorce that had not only taken from him his children, but also his sobriety, and so was ill-fit to teach that day. Well, that afternoon, on Tuesday the 20th of April, at around 1.13 p.m., a disgruntled employee entered the premises with his 12-gauge Mossberg pump shotgun and began firing indiscriminately. 
This was the second most deadly shooting of the five that would occur that week. As Sheriff O'Neill said in a press conference after the Oak Ridge incident, you don't need to be a marksman if you're using a shotgun. You just got a point and shoot. The witnesses at the Oak Ridge shooting could attest to the truth of O'Neill's statement. The shooter had entered one class and practically evaporated half of its populace in five shots. Bill's art class was the last one to be visited by the disgruntled employee, as Bill made sure he would not be visiting any others. One student remembered Mr. Allred saying, All right, everyone against the wall. As the shooter entered the classroom, Mr. Allred leveraged the shotgun from the disgruntled employee before he could even get a shot off. The shooter tried to kill himself by stabbing his neck with a ballpoint pen, but Bill subdued him before he could. As one student remarked, Our sub wasn't really a big guy, but I... I... I mean, he was scary as hell. He looked crazier than the shooter did. Really. That was the day Bill Allred became famous. The shooting itself received enough attention, but Bill Allred was the man who had been involved in two consecutive mass shootings. That was far more interesting than the 78 students who had been slain in the past two days. Bill refused to appear on any television program, even though he had been asked by the Today Show, Good Morning America, Real Time with Bill Maher, Jimmy Kimmel Live, The View, and several others to appear. That night, Bill told his wife that the odds of it happening again were so astronomical that they ought to feel more comfortable now than they had before the two shootings. This comforted his wife, but she still admonished him to take the rest of the week off. Well, Bill ignored her. And, against the advice of many healthcare professionals, Bill Allred subbed again the next day. It was Wednesday, the 21st of April, and the largest mass shooting in the history of the United States was about to take place. Bill was subbing at Oakcrest High School, not to be confused with Oak Ridge High School or Oakmont Middle School, when a team of seven students, all armed with close to a dozen firearms each, ranging from Glock 18s with extended magazines to AA-12s, stormed the school at a synchronized time from various entrances. Forty students and faculty were killed before anyone could even alert the police. Many of the students said they thought the world was ending, as one student recalled, it was like Armageddon, like the ground was shaking, like God was making the air turn to hellfire. And indeed, the air did turn into something like hellfire. Over 1,945 rounds were fired in that school, filling its corridors with a thin metallic mist that could be seen even hours after it was all over. And Bill Allred was in the middle of it again. Bill was subbing Mr. Fisk's World Civilization class when the first shots rang out. Mr. Fisk was a favorite teacher of most of the student body, but a knee surgery put him out of commission for a few weeks. His long-term sub had just quit two days prior, and this was his reasoning. I'll be damned if I get killed by some 15-year-old pimple-faced dickhead who's upset because they can't get a date. And so, Bill was subbing for Mr. Fisk when the seven heavily armed students turned the air to hellfire. Luckily for Bill, Mr. Fisk's class was in the center of the school and had no windows. It was the furthest class from any point of entry, and by the time one of the shooters reached Bill's class, the other six had been killed or apprehended by the police, although more than 24 officers were lost in the firefight. Bill's classroom was slick with urine as many of his students had relieved themselves from fear. One of the students remembered Bill saying, Who wants to die fighting instead of in their own piss? Two large male students raised their hands, and as the last living shooter breached their classroom, Bill and the two students pounced. The shooter let off two rounds, both missing their targets. Moments later, when the police finally arrived at Mr. Fisk's classroom, they found Bill Allred on top of the shooter, turning his face into raspberry jelly. That night, Bill went from famous to messianic. Many people believed him to be a kind of guardian angel. His name was as recognized as Jesus or Buddha. His presence at these shootings turned from coincidence to preordained to destiny, and even Bill himself began to believe that it was his destiny to stop these shootings. His wife thought he had begun to go crazy. Years later, in an interview, she said that she had pleaded with him, Bilbo, Bilbo, you can't do this, please, baby, you gotta stay home. Of course, Bill Allred didn't listen to his wife. And although the Department of Homeland Security, the President of the United States, and the Governor of Utah advised for schools to be closed for the remaining week, the local Salt Lake County Superintendents and Board of Education stated, If we cancel school, we are giving in to exactly what these deranged students want. School will be held as scheduled. And so that Thursday, class was held, and that Thursday, Bill Allred subbed again. When the students of Mrs. Hitchens' health class saw Bill walk in, half of them collected their things and left immediately. 
The other half sat motionless in terror. Bill was the angel of death. He practically still had the blood of dead students on his loafers. But Bill Allred was ready for anything. That Thursday, the 22nd of April, at Oakhurst Middle School, not to be confused with Oak Ridge High School, or Oak Crest High School, or Oakmont Middle School, a young man carried in a bolt-action 300 Winchester Magnum, which he had bought from a man online. The first class he entered was Bill Allred's, and upon seeing Bill, he turned and ran away. Bill chased the shooter, but caught him only after he had shot one other student and then himself. The gun being a bolt-action, rapid fire was out of the question. Bill wasn't able to apprehend the shooter before his death, but he had scared him, and he had saved lives, and he had been involved. The Oakhurst incident being minimal in death and destruction, the public school system decided to finish out the week, and Bill Allred couldn't be happier. His wife was worried for his safety and his sanity, but was somehow attracted to the idea that perhaps her husband was not just a substitute teacher, but someone appointed by God himself to stop these tragic happenings. And so, that Friday, Bill Allred, who was called Bilbo by his wife, subbed at Mountaindale High School and was killed by a bolt that ruptured his aorta. Many students recall Mr. Allred yelling to the young shooter as he entered the classroom, You can't get away with this while I'm here. And the shooter replying by sending a bullet through his chest. Bill died only seconds later. He was staring at Mrs. Donaldson's poster of The Hobbit. And for a split second before Bill Allred died, he thought of that unlikely hero. But mostly, Bill Allred thought of his wife. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, this episode was written and edited by me. Um, and the music was, again, provided by Kevin McLeod. Thank you.